Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on elimination reactions of haloalkanes. Now in this video we're going to look at what we mean by an elimination reaction. Uh, we're going to look at the similarities and differences between elimination reactions and nucleophilic substitution reactions as well. Uh, we're going to look at the mechanism and how we can actually show an elimination reaction and we're also going to look at some isomer products uh, that we form from this. So we're going to look at um, the reaction of what we mean by the word elimination. So elimination is where we remove atoms from a molecule and we form an alkene in this case. So we're going to react it with um, haloalkanes and that's the context that we're going to keep it in. Now we're going to look at um, uh, this reaction with a haloalkane over here and actually the solvent plays a big role uh, in how the reaction proceeds. Now we're going to be reacting hydroxide ions with uh, a halo alkene and depending on the solvent that we put it in will depend on what type of reaction actually happens. So I've got an example here and here I've got uh, chloropropane, so one chloropropane uh, and what I've done is I've shown two different scenarios. So if we take our, if we react this with something like sodium hydroxide, in other words we produce hydroxide ions, depending on the solvent that we dissolve them hydroxide in will depend on the type of products that we produce. So, for example, if we take aqueous sodium hydroxide, uh, which is just sodium hydroxide dissolved in water, then we produce an alcohol, and the reaction proceeds by a nucleophilic substitution. Now, there is a video that looks into the mechanisms of nucleophilic substitution with hydroxide ions, so if you're not sure on that mechanism, you just click on the link below, and you can have a look at that video first. Um, but if we take the sodium hydroxide and we dissolve it in ethanol, uh, which is like or any type of alcoholic solution, normally it's ethanol, uh, then we actually produce a different reaction and we have what we call an elimination reaction uh, and that produces an alkene. So in the exam question you have to be really careful, look at the question and make sure you know what the hydroxide is dissolved in. If it's dissolved in water, you get nucleophilic substitution. If it's dissolved in ethanol, uh, you get an elimination reaction. And we're going to show a mechanism here. Uh, so the mechanism is basically where we have curly arrows and they show the direction of electron transfer and electrons always uh, originate from bonds or a lone pair of electrons and that's what we need to know uh, in, this, um, in this example before we go on to the mechanism. Okay, so what I've done is I've drawn uh, a molecule out already and again this is uh, chloropropane, uh, one chloropropane, so I've taken it from over here. And I've got a hydroxide ion, which is here. Now, this hydroxide ion will be dissolved in alcohol. It's an ethanolic solution. And we're going to show the mechanism that's involved. And you have to be really careful with the hydrogens it's going to go for. Now, the OH, in this case, as opposed to aqueous, it acted as a nucleophile. In other words, it went for a delta positive carbon or an area of electron deficiency. In elimination reactions, the hydroxide ion actually acts as a base instead. So it's not going to go for a delta positive carbon because it's not a nucleophile. So bases are proton acceptors. So this hydroxide ion is going to go for a proton. And uh, when we're dealing with elimination reactions, it, the hydroxide ion actually goes for hydrogen on a carbon that is adjacent to the carbon with the halogen attached to it. So what we mean by that is here's our halogen. This is bonded to a carbon. Now the hydroxide ion will only go for hydrogens that are on the adjacent carbon to the halogen uh, joined carbon. So in this case we've only got one option which is this one here. So the hydroxide will either go for this proton or this proton here or this hydrogen. So I'm just going to draw it down here because it's easier, we've got a bit more space to it. So I'm going to draw our mechanism, now it goes from there to our proton. Uh, and the electrons, it must go from the lone pair of electrons directly to the hydrogen there. Now, what we're doing is uh, the hydroxide ion is effectively uh, bonding with the hydrogen. So this bond will break. Now, the electrons from this bond will actually go into this middle bond here. Uh, and it will form a double bond because we're pushing more electrons onto what is already a single bond. And we're making a double bond. Now, because this is effectively starting to form a double bond, this carbon here now has too many bonds. It has one, two, three, and then four, five, which is a double bond there. So one atom or one bond has to break, and the bond that breaks is the halogen bond. So again, we're going to draw electrons from the bond to the chlorine. And when we get an arrow going from a bond to an atom, 
we effectively are breaking that bond and the halogen is now dropping up. So we've lost two things from this. Remember, it's an elimination reaction. We're losing the proton from here because the hydrogen is reacting with it and we're losing the chlorine from here as well. So the reaction that we're producing, or the product, sorry, that we're producing is this. So we'll have our three hydrogens there. That's unchanged. We have a single bond there, which is fine. We have another carbon. Now, this hydrogen is gone, so we don't draw it anymore. We've got a double bond there, as you can see. Uh, we have a carbon, and we have two hydrogens either side there. So what is lost from this uh, reaction is effectively a hydrogen and a Cl- minus is lost. Now, the hydrogen reacts with the OH- minus to form water, and then we have our chloride ion that's floating around as well. Now, this the chloride ion would actually react with whatever metal was part of this, that's sodium hydroxide. So these are the two other products that we have actually produced. But crucially, we've produced an alkene. Now, this is called propionine, or in other words, just propene, because it can only have one position. So this is propene. We formed an alkene. This could be useful for making plastics uh, or other types of polymers. So it's a really useful type of reaction because we can actually make an alkene and we haven't started from uh, crude oil, as you can see here. So we can undertake that mechanism there. Okay, like I say, we've got to watch out for isomers. Now, this is fine. We can only get one type of product here because the here of the halogen is on the end of the carbon. But let's suppose the halogen is now somewhere in the middle. Now you can see here, there's our halogen there, and this is a uh, this is um, two chlorobutane, uh, so the chlorine is on the second carbon. Now we've got two potential options for this. So here's our hydroxide ion here, and I've done them in different colors to show two different mechanisms. So the, there's the halogen, there's the carbon, and we look at the adjacent carbons to that, and these are the potential uh, hydrogens that um, the hydroxide ion could go for. So it can go for this hydrogen here, or any of the hydrogens on this carbon, but I've just picked the bottom one because it's just easier to represent. Uh, or it could go for the hydrogens on this carbon. Now that's really important because we can actually get isomers from this as well. Now, if we follow the red arrow here, so the electrons go from the lone pair onto the proton. Again, the electrons from this bond form the double bond in the middle here, and then that kicks off the halogen. So the double bond is now being formed here. Now, this is a, a new product. And we're going to write the name of it, write it in blue. So this is called but1ene. So I'll put that there, but1ene. So that's our product there. Um, we don't have any um, other type of isomer isomerism here. Uh, that's all we've got, which is but1ene. But if we attack it on this side, which is the blue arrow, uh, this is the hydrogen the opposite side. So it goes from here into the hydrogen. The electrons go from the single bond to form the double bond there. And then the halogen's kicked off in the same place. Uh, you can see here that now the double bond is sitting in the middle, so in here. Now this product is called um, butetuene. So you can see here that we've actually formed two different types of isomer. So we can have an equal chance of this forming or this forming effectively, and we'll get two, we'll get a mixture of isomers. We call this positional isomerism because the position of the double bond is changing. It's one here and it's on the second carbon here. So that's really, really important. But crucially, this one here, butuene, actually comes in two other types of isomerism. And I've drawn them out here. Now, this is called geometric isomerism. Um, and the reason why is because uh, we have what we call an EZ isomerism. Now, if I just zoom in on this double bond here in the middle, so I'll draw a box around there. Now, if I redraw this so we can see our EZ a little bit easier, you may be able to see it. So there's our double bond there. I've redrawn, I've brought the double bond here, and I've literally seen what's to the right of this double bond. So we have a CH3 and a hydrogen, and that's what I've drawn there. And onto this one, we have a hydrogen and a CH3. So we have exactly the same. Now you can see the CH3s are on the same side of the carbon. So we call that um, Z. Uh, but2ene, but2ene, uh, sometimes also known as cis, because that means it's on the same side. So it could be cis butene or z butene. It's given two names. But if we look on the other side, you can see here if we have the CH3s 
flipped over onto the other side, we can get something called E-butyrene. Um, so we'll put that on there. And E stands for, uh, is German for n uh, and Z is German for Sutsamen. Um, so n meaning opposite. So this is E-butyrene. Uh, and again, you might see it written as um, trans, because these are opposite, a bit like transatlantic flights. So uh, it means going opposite the Atlantic. So trans means the CH3s are now opposite. But crucially, what we're forming is three types of isomer. We've got butyrene, and then we have the two types of isomer of butyrene. We have Z-butyrene and E-butyrene. So you can see here we've got three different types. It's not a brilliant reaction because we're getting a lot of impurities if you want a specific type of isomer. And um, Now, you might get more uh, of one type of isomer than the other, um, but that depends on the, um, the sterics of the molecule, which is not required at AS level. But um, that's it. I hope that helps. Bye.